Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Season 3 of Pods the Multiverse, an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us get together and play 5th edition rules in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be portraying the world of Icewind Dale and its inhabitants. Joining me are three of my favorite humans playing our main party this season. Well, I'm not a human in this. I'm Scala, and I'm playing a halfling, Bard, what goes by the name of Wink. <laughs> I'm Andy. I will be playing Everett, the reborn ranger. And I'm Jimmy. I play Jib, the sea elf fighter. We appreciate you listening, and as always, please review our episodes and engage with us on our Twitter and Discord server, and go check out our Patreon. And with all that out of the way, let's get into our season premiere. All right, there it goes. Silence. At first, only silence. Then the wind. Only the wind. In the frigid, tundric wastes of Icewind Dale, great evil looms. Disparate partitions of souls live in towns pockmarking the region. Towns unify under a single purpose, to help turn the gears of capital. Mines, fisheries, and logging camps feed the ever-present Vale Baroche Corporation. As such, magic has quieted in and around the ten towns as of late. Where once buildings stayed illuminated by ever-burning torch or enchanted bauble, now wood is stacked for kindling that smoke signals the dawn of a new day for this northern pocket of Faerun. The wizard-driven thunder that sparked life in otherwise lifeless gadgets is now accomplished by oil, ores, and even batteries. The character of Icewind Dale has shifted from the majestic to something industrial, unflinching, resolute, and colder than ever before. In the wake of these changes, rumors abound. Has the waning of magic changed the nature of Oriel herself? Are sacrifices to become a thing of the past? Will magic follow in its wake? But those questions are of no concern to these three adventurers who gather forth and make way for Caer Dineval to investigate the most recent in a string of murders. At the docks of Caer Dineval, a frigid mist overtakes the edge as each of these three step off of the boat. And the first footfall is made by... Scala, please introduce your character. All right. Stepping unshod and somewhat bow-legged from the gangplank, a middle-aged halfling beams from beneath a broad-brimmed straw hat. The creases on their face suggest that they're often of this sunny disposition. The rest of their appearance suggests someone who took up the adventurer's trade on pure impulse. Their fencing blade is fashioned from a rusty pitchfork tine. Their shield is made of several picket planks, and their patched-together leather vest seems like it will offer a little protection from either attacks or the northern elements. Their only possessions that appear in good condition are the bright red scarf that hangs around their neck and the heirloom banjo slung across their back. Ooh! I tell you, it's good to be back on dry land again! They stretch their legs and rub their shoeless feet a bit. Amazing. Amazing. And as this chipper individual, scantily prepared for the cold that lies ahead, steps off the dock. They turn back to find... Andy, please introduce your character. Stepping silently into view, you see a tall, gaunt silhouette. A heavy white scarf and wrapped bandages obscure most of his face beneath a heavy hood banded with twisted cloth and leather around his head. The rest of his form is equally ambiguous. Heavy furs and leathers, wrappings, and tattered throws of patterned wools and cashmeres cover his heavy leather belts and armor. His equipment and arms give the impression of a fierce monster hunter. A metal bracer alludes to his dominant hand, which holds a sharp crescent axe at his side, while strung across his back rests an intimidating black longbow. You'd see no breath drawn from this figure as he wears the frostbite on his fingers like the dirt on his boots. Weary and long-traveled, his tired, cold eyes, dark, nearly black, look out over this desolate scene. Everett says nothing at all but a gruff. <sighs> Another shithole. Love it. And now, Wink, as you're a little bit further away from the boat, you're still looking back, you notice mist begins to overtake it, but you look back long enough to see coming and stepping from the mist, Jimmy. Please describe your character. You see a lanky, young-looking elf with pale blue skin. He wears clothes befitting a dock worker of the north, drab overalls with the straps hanging by his sides, a white long sleeve thermal shirt, and a fur-lined parka. A hat with ear flaps partly covers his scraggly, wet-looking green hair. Oh my god. Amazing. He holds a big chitinous shield crusted with barnacles and algae, and he wears a saber on his belt. He's trying to look tough, but his assertiveness is betrayed by a grim look about his mouth. Awesome. All right. Do I know these two characters who are following me off the boat? 
they probably look familiar, but are not people that you have conversed with. Okay. You've probably seen them milling about on the ship, and there may be a chance that, given Wink's personality, Wink may have tried to struck up a conversation, and uh, probably with Everett, I would have guessed. Everett would have been a la Lupin on the train to Hogwarts, inert the entire ride. Got it. <laughs> mm. Sleeping? You don't know. <laughs> okay. The word we use is inert. Inert. <laughs> and we don't have to unpack it. We can just take it for what it is. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, so I mean, probably familiar in terms of you recognize their appearance, but that would probably be it. And that's fine. We're going to start this off real classic, like, one of the three of you, as you're getting your bearings on the docks, just give me a group perception check. I'll uh, tell you what you see. Well, that's an 18 for me. 16. 21. Beautiful. Cool. As you step off on the dock, you begin to survey your surroundings. Doing a full turn, 360 degrees, just take everything in. You notice, you know, as you look to your left and you peer up, you see this large looming tower. Straight in front of you, you notice the typical kind of small shanty town look. Small buildings, some houses, some probably storehouses, variety of storefronts. And then to your right, and then also going behind you before it jets out into the waters, large cliffside. You see some bustling activity on the coastline itself, some rope and netting that suggests some sort of activity that would go on there, and up above two large buildings, but with the mist, hard to make out what those buildings are exactly. Whether you would roll a 21 or a 2, you probably would have seen, stepping out from the mist, a relatively cheery looking dwarf and he's kind of waving at you and calls out to the three of you hey the three of you huh been expecting you well kiss has been expecting you your names for me just in case come on any one of you right man beg your pardon periwinkle wuggins at your service you can call me wink though i wink had periwinkle but wink's fine with me you looking to you jimmy call me jib jib that that checks out quiet one i am everett it says everett that is what i said okay all right well anyway Y'all sure slept a lot on the boat, Everett. Y'all right? I have journeyed many miles. I am fine. Well, that's good. You got plenty of shit to do here, let me tell you. Anyway, Tessa's waiting for you. You can go see her, but you got any questions for me? Probably where she is. I'll tell you that in a second. Well, you know who we are, and we don't know who you are. Hey, my manners are not uh, the best. Mish McTavin, nice to meet you. I live around here. If you have any questions about the town, I'm happy to answer them for you. Mish, my friend, uh, how are you associated with Kessa? Well, not many people that live in Caradon of all lately can't say they're not associated with Kessa. What with her kind of running Operation Frostbite, she's kind of in everybody's business lately. That sounded a lot meaner than it was. We don't mind her being around. She's fine. Everybody knows Kessa. Just put it that way. That seemed like an odd qualifying statement. Is this the first time we would have heard of Operation Frostbite? No, it wouldn't have been. Okay. But with a 12 insight, I feel like I believe what Mish is telling me. Yeah, if anyone else wants to roll insight, you're welcome to. Why not? First nat 20 of the game. There we go. Cool. That's a 26 total. On a nat 20, you can tell that Mish is pretty much above board. You can glean from the way that he's enunciating his words. He's overextending his politeness, and he's overstating the warmness he feels towards Kessa, but you can't sense any, like, extreme ire in his words. Very well. You said you live around here, Mish? My whole life. Never knew anywhere else. Didn't need to. Always nice around here. Got fish for days, you know? You look cold, though, no? Buddy, it's cold everywhere. Where the hell else am I going to go? Probably south. It's not as cold to the south. <sighs> I figured the three of you wouldn't know the charms of the North. Oh, I'm from the North. You're not from the North. Well, I don't know them yet, but I'm sure I am hoping to learn them. Been like you my whole life, stuck in one place, but, you know, some things happened and I thought I'd get out and see the world, so it looks a little dreary, but I'm sure it has its hidden gems. Oh, it's got its charms, there's no doubt. In fact, you'll come across them soon enough. Kessa's waiting for you at the uphill climb. Well, let's keep her waiting no longer. Lead the way, please, my friend Mish. Yes, please. I have no need of charm let us get on with it well you can barely see it through the mist but it's right up there he points towards when you had first gotten off the dock and you'd look to the right and you saw that cliff and you see two buildings you couldn't quite make out he's pointing in that direction it looks to be probably a half hour walk caradineval is a relatively small town i'm not going to be leading you there i actually got plenty of shit to do here at the dock but any last questions a practical question before i go you seem dressed pretty warmly and uh... As is probably self-evident, I'm not from the North. Do you have any idea where someone like me might find, like a warm winter coat, something of that nature? Well, yeah, the stores here do sell coats. Usually a pretty good idea to stock those. But look, buddy, uh, uh, as a friend, before you go spending your own money on that, ask that question to Kessa. She may have something for you. Thanks for looking out, cuz. (laughs) (laughs) 
Cool. He's not going to follow you. He just pointed up in the direction. It is completely pathed from here to there. It's a 30 minute walk. Y'all can just take it. I'm not going to make you roll anything. If you want to make any perception checks along the way to see if there are any cool landmarks you may want to check out later, you can. Yeah, I mean, I'll roll perception as we're traveling. Instinctively, I picked up my d20 because I'm not used to DMing yet. <laughs> <laughs> when someone says roll perception, I'm like, I have to do this thing. <laughs> but I do have a goal in mind here. I'm not really looking for landmarks or anything. I'm looking to see if I see anyone familiar. Go for it. That's only going to be a 14. On a 14, you do not see anyone familiar. And frankly, you don't see a lot of people in general. People are not really milling about the streets. You do see a lot of the houses and buildings are lit, suggesting people inside. It is not an abandoned town by any means. It's just not the type of place where people congregate outdoors. Does anyone else want to make a perception? I don't think Wink is being too observant. Oh, that's a nat 20 plus one. Jib's taking it all in. Nice. On a nat 20, Jib, of all things, you find something that might be a little familiar to you. You see a signpost to your right as you're at the bottom of this hill leading up to this place called the Uphill Climb. You see a sign that just says the fishery. And as you peer out, you actually do see a fishing camp. Relatively small to mid-size in nature. You see a handful of people over there milling about. Why is this familiar to me? Weren't you like a fucking sailor or some shit? Well, more of a dock worker. I haul rope all day. Yeah, ropes and fish are fucking all over the place on those docks, right? <laughs> yeah, there's fish, I suppose. There's also lumber and, you know, other types of raw materials. When I said familiar to you, I meant, like, the vibe. You haven't, like, had a flash of this place. It's just, like, I see. Fish Nautical stuff, shit. You know? yeah. Jib fish shit. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> jib shit. It's just jib shit. Here it's we crazy. go. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, otherwise you all can make your way towards the uphill climb if that's what you want to do. That's what I want to do. All right. The three of you notice this quaint-looking two-story bar, and you open the door. And as soon as you step inside the uphill climb, it immediately feels familiar to you all. Except maybe you, Everett. There's a camaraderie here that can only exist among people who live and survive in the worst of conditions. Gentle bar music plays on in the background under the chatter of patrons, clinking their glasses, laughing, coughing, yelling and generally enjoying life. The coldness and the desolation that you felt on your walk here is immediately gone. There is a sort of comfort to this place. And as you see all these people milling about and causing a charming, sweet ruckus, you see behind the bar a middle-aged gnome who's cleaning glasses and managing the crowd. Otherwise, you notice the staircase that leads up to that second floor. Just waving at the bartender. Howdy! Hello, friend. Oh, how you doing? My name's Periwinkle. Call me Wink. I'm from out of town, you see, and uh, my associates and I, we was just looking for Kessa. We were told we could find her here? She at one of these tables, or she got a room upstairs? Kessa? Kessa's got her own room. You better believe that. That's Kessa. Yeah, she's upstairs. The three of you? Who are you? I already told you who I am, but I'll let my companions introduce themselves. I'm Jib. Nice to meet you. Rourke, nice to meet you. This one doesn't talk much. I look about this room and this scene, all the people getting on with their lives. (laughs) Everett hates happiness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I look at this woman and I say The gnome is a they uh, Sorry, I look at them and say We have been hired by Kessa for work Where may we find her, please? You walk upstairs, you'll see her immediately I'm assuming she sent you here because of the uh, accidents over at the uh, fishing camp there? None of my business, none of my business she can tell you everything. Well, that's quite all right. I think that's why we're here. He didn't tell us much. Everett's already walking up the stairs. Bye. All right, we better go then. <laughs> I follow Everett. <laughs> well, I do work for a security company now, and hopefully after I pass through here, y'all feel a little more secure. Oh, later, my friend Rourke. Yeah, Rourke always feels secure. Easy back here behind the bar. Everybody's real nice. See you later. And I follow the rest of them up. Oh, my God. Wink is such a gem. Yeah. <laughs> Wink's Wink's pretty magnifique. All three of you are. These are excellent characters. I love them. Yeah, you walk upstairs, and you can tell that what probably once was maybe a bed and breakfast has been completely repurposed into sort of a situation room. You see a long table, several chairs along its edges, and at the end, you see a woman, probably middle-aged, looking a little worn down but sharp. You don't need to roll anything. It's pretty evident that this is Kessa. You see two people kind of at her side, pouring over some papers. She looks up, notices the three of you, gives them a hand wave to disperse the area. They do, 
and she looks at you, waving her hand at you hastily, almost as if there is real urgency to the situation, even though she's just sitting in a chair. Ah, the three of you. Good, great, sit, whatever. I don't care. Either way, listen. Kessa. I stumble as I make my way towards her. Y- you all right? Uh, whatever. I'm your handler. You report to me. I give you the information you got. What's on the table? You're just going to cut me off to ask a question <laughs> out of character? <laughs> Really? Everett, while Kessa starts talking, looks at the table. Roll perception. I'm not just going to give you. you information after you cut and me as off. the DM, you tell me what to roll. <laughs> yes, that's how it works, Jeffy. Thanks. I'll roll perception now. Thank you. I'm going to give you a DC 50. Keep fucking interrupting me. That's a 23 <laughs> perception. My God. On a 23, you see everything that's on the table, which isn't much. So oddly, it's a long table. The first 70% of this table is empty. There's nothing on it. Everything is kind of at where Kessa is sitting at the table. You're not super close yet. You're still walking up but you can tell very easily that you know it's a ledger of names on one piece of paper on another piece of paper is like general documentation so like paragraphs of text but you definitely can't make that out even on a 20 whatever the fuck you rolled and then a variety of maps with ink circling specific areas one of the maps looks like what you surveyed when you stepped out which would probably mean it's a map of care wink last into the room climbs up onto the nearest available chair and then stands on it so they can see over the table. (laughs) Halfling problems. Jib is standing at attention with his best listening face looking directly at Kessa. Now Jib's what you like to see as a deer. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Cool. Kessa like takes a pause in the middle of her sentence to like give you like a what? As you wink step up on the chair and then she realizes oh you needed a better vantage. But like she was a little alarmed at you just kind of hopping on a chair. She gives a quick glance over to you, Everett, as she can see that clearly you're not paying her any attention. And then she kind of shakes her head, steals herself back, snaps at you, Everett. It's, it's simple. I gave you the information you got. You go act on that information, okay? We meaning Vitas, by the way. Vitas uh, security firm. You work for us now. Great. Pretty simple stuff. You following along? Good. All right. Great. So listen, string of murders all around fail barrage. Lately, right here in Care Denival. I don't like this. This means I'm stuck here. I don't like it here. Being stuck here sucks. Doesn't seem so bad. You've been here, what, five minutes, kid? Eh, about 30. Yeah, okay, great. Good for you. That's not a great data point. Be here a little bit longer, then tell me how you feel. All right. (laughs) Yeah, speaking of data points, I assume you have some for us, primarily about the victims, how they came to their untimely ends. Now this, this is what we like to see. Focused. Good. I like you. Which one are you? Periwinkle Wuggins, at your service. Call me Wink. Great. That's good. Thank you very much. Awesome. Great. Data. Yes. All workers. Regular people. The newest one, name's Prim. Okay? He's middle management. Now, people are taking notice. In fact, people in Bryn Shander are taking notice. That's why we got ourselves here. Anyway. Fail. Not too happy about any of this. Fail meaning Fail Barash, the head of Fail Barash, the one that owns the fishing company. You get this, right? You know all this already? Great. Good. I'm just over here from Bremen. I want to get out of here as quickly as possible. You all need to go figure this out, okay? Questions? I'm sure you got plenty. Tell me. What do we got? What do you know? About what? That's why you gotta ask me questions. How are these people murdered? This is good. These are the kind of questions, okay? You, better question next time. All right. Which one are you again? I'm Everett. Okay, Wink, Everett, and then the less impressive one. Got it. Good. Great. How were they murdered? They are stabbed. We really don't know. We just know that there's been blood everywhere in the scenes. We're guessing stabbings, but the bodies are gone every time. Mm. Just little pieces are left behind. There's enough pieces to know that it's them. Little pe- what what kind, of- kind of piece? Is it the same piece each time or different? It's different. Sometimes it's an eye. Sometimes it's the whole head. Ugh, the whole head. One thing is that every time there's always been a splatter of blood. In the shape of a sword. That's been consistent. How long has this been going on? A couple weeks now. I don't know, a good handful of people. There was Cal, Helga, and Sturm, Desha, and now Prim. Yeah, five. We got five murders. And it's mentioned it before. Prim was the first manager, so people are really starting to take notice. Fail himself is really keen to get this one solved. Other than them all working for Fail Barash, did these individuals have anything in common with each other that you could identify? Well, at first it was all, you know, kind of the lower people. Just the regular people. It was just them at first. And now with Prim on the list, it's, it's hard to really know what the pattern is. They all work at Fail Barash. That might be it. In a way, I hope it's it, because it makes us a little bit easier, a little bit tidier, you know? Fail Barash isn't really loved around here. I see. So you are saying you have enemies. I don't have enemies. I work for Vetus. The people who have hired Vetus, this Fail Barash, they have enemies. I like that pronunciation from Everett. That's cool. Well, yeah, I mean, they own half of the production companies in Icewind Dale. More. And what's worse is they've been selling them off just to get rid of their union. Lots of people are upset with Fail Barash right now. Sure. Lots of people have a particular interest in undermining what they're doing. But the fact that it's been here lately is a little weird. Caradineval is a small town. Only so many people. 
that Culver up the road, he tried to buy out the fishery, but I don't know. That's very much grasping at straws. And then, you know, the speaker has gone missing. That's not great, but that's not really my problem. Not yours either. I don't know why I mentioned that. Don't worry about that. Forget about that. Focus on these murders. Speaker of what? Roll history. Can I roll this as well? Oh, you can all roll this. <coughs> Just a 10. It's an 18. I got a 16. Okay. Even on the 10, all of you would know that speaker is a terminology used in Icewind Dale to describe what is probably, as we would know it here in the real world, the mayor of the town. Mm. Okay. Mm. I see. Speaker's missing. Mm. And has this person gone missing during the same time as these murders? The murder started and then he went missing. My gut tells me, this is your area. This is for you. This is not for me to solve. My gut says it's probably not him, but I wouldn't say Cranick's a very good speaker. All right. What's so bad about him? He just doesn't pay a lot of attention to his people. Did any of these murders happen after his disappearance? Yes. Prim was murdered after he disappeared. Perhaps Desha too. I forget the timeline. One second. She looks at her papers and looks at the ledger. Yeah, I am curious of the timeline. Is there a sort of consistent spacing between the dead bodies showing up? There is not. No. I will say that they don't happen in short succession. So, let's see here. The shortest gap between two murders is four days. But it's pretty inconsistent. Sometimes it's four. Sometimes it's six. Been going on for a few weeks now. Is the manager part of the union? They're all part of the union. Okay. Again, that Culver down the road was hoping to, what with Fail selling off parts of the business, hoping he'd get a cut of it. But for whatever reason, Fail didn't want to get rid of this one just yet. All right. Do you have the exact location of these crime scenes? I do. Have they been tampered with in any way? Well, you know, the early ones, the blood spatters are gone. But you get down there now... Unfortunately for the workers, a lot of what's left of Prim is still there. It's right here. And she points down to the map, and you would immediately see it as the fishing camp that Jib, you spotted on your way up. All right. You're welcome to check out the scene. I would also implore you to go and visit my associate over at the Watchtower, Crosstown. What's their name? You'll be looking for a Quim. He was working the night of the murder. The night we believe the murder to have taken place. Works for Vetus? All right. Well, we've got a few leads here. You do. The pieces of what was left, you said. May we see them? Go to the fishing camp. They're still there. I don't know if I want to see them. The previous, you said an eye, a head, others, I assume? Those have been disposed of. Who would do such a thing? It's a small town. It's not like we really have a morgue or a place to put these things. I don't feel right storing heads and eyeballs in jars for people to see. That does seem right civilized. I do have something of a peculiar question before I'm satisfied. And that is, have there been any unexplained... Goblin's on. Something about this don't strike me right. Yeah, you and many other people. That's why you're here. Any noises, any lights, any signs of spellcraft that have been noticed around the town that are out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary, you say. Not out of the ordinary. But something... Quinn can tell you more. But there is an outpost not too far from this building. Best we know a cult lives there. But again, they've lived there a long time. All right. Hard to call it out of the ordinary when it's something these people deal with every day. What's this cult believe in now? As of yet, this cult has not become relevant to our investigation. That's not to say they wouldn't, but it is to say that I am not going to waste my time learning about them until I need to. Investigation. But there is a town full of people that surely have plenty of information for you, should you need it. All right. And you'll be right here? To where I'm stuck. And where are we to stay? If you need to stay, Dinah's rest is near the watchtower. You'll see it there. She sees on you, Jib, a look of confusion. Ah, yeah, that's right. And she pulls out and, and just gives you each 15 gold... Take this. Should get you room and board if you need it. You're gonna. A little bit extra for anything else you might need. All right. Yeah, yeah, I reckon this is enough to get a winter coat. And uh, if so, where might I procure one? You want anything like that, you can go to the storehouse. It's on the way to the watchtower. Much obliged. All right. She had said all of the incidents took place in this town, in Cardenval. She said most. Okay. Would the map that I saw had shown me if any were very far away from here or not? I'm going to treat this as you taking a second look with the new information you've gotten from her. If you could roll again, that'd be great. Okay. You all are welcome to roll this, by the way. This is perception for the table? For the table. Yeah. That is a 17, but I'm going to use my knowledge of a past life to add a d6 to that. There it is. I sort of look at this table, and an odd flash of a dull blue streaks across my otherwise black eyes from beneath my masked face. Cool. That's hella flavor. We like that. And that becomes a 22. 
Anyone else have anything better than that or no? Jib is overwhelmed and rolled a five. He got insulted by Kessa. He's probably not yeah. feeling too good about that. Jib is wondering what this room was used for before it was used for this. <laughs> <laughs> In your head, you hear the sound of a Florida man playing a DM saying, what probably once was maybe a bed and breakfast has been completely repurposed into sort of a situation room. And uh, what about you, Wink? Wink's just making sure all 15 gold are in the pouch and strapped in on their belt. <laughs> really, really keen on getting that Very nice, good. snazzy coat. Cool. On a 22 Everett, as your eyes peel back and that blue sheen cascades over the map, you notice now, this time around, that the inks are actually of a different color. You can't know for certain what each one of them means, but you can glean that probably what she's doing is taking notes as to where murders have occurred where they have occurred more recently, less recently, and where Vetus expects murders to occur next. So these are locations of interest in what she is probably believing to be a much larger investigation. All right. Are we sharing this information? You'd have to RP it. Everett is not currently. I'm not just going to delete it from the game. It's I'll bring it up. Not in this room. That's fine. Cool. Anything else you want to do with Kessa? No. Wings out the door. All right, Kessa. Pleasure meeting you. We'll uh, see you later. Great. Thank you very much. Let's keep this as expedient as possible. Again, fishing camp, storehouse, watchtower. Any one of those three. Just get some information. Jib stumbles again as he walks towards the stairs. Roll a deck save. Roll a deck <laughs> save for me. That's uh, 10. <laughs> you pick yourself up and move on. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Awesome. You make your way downstairs. If you want to do anything in the bar, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can make your way outside and you all figure out amongst yourselves what you want to do next. So, Rourke, you make all your own stuff here or do you order from out of town? Oh, buddy. I mean, Carrington Hall is pretty small. Hard for me to uh, <laughs> make my own stuff. A lot of it's ordered. It doesn't mean it's not good. We got some great brews here, actually. Want to try one? I'm a bit of a hobbyist brewer myself. I made beer back in Red Rock and cider, too. When the occasion arose, you know, I got a bit of know-how when it comes to that sort of thing. So sure, let me see what you got. I heard they got juniper berries up here. I always wanted to try making gin. All right. Hey, uh, Wink, we got a job to do here. <laughs> we can get drinks later. Oh, Ke- no, Kessa and I are good friends. She's great, trust me. She's got the patience of a saint. You see Rourke take, you know, the little taste tester beer glasses, but Rourke being so tiny, it's relatively normal size for Rourke. <laughs> Puts it on the counter and starts to pour a oh, small amount for you to try. Make sure to get you one with Juniper. Absolutely. Red Rock, you say. Don't see a lot of people from Red Rock up here, but the occasional enthusiast will come up here for some brews. They usually go to Bryn Shander, though. I'm surprised to hear anyone from Red Rock makes it up this way at all. Small town. Not too many folk keen on leaving it. But, uh, cheers. And I down the little sample and be on my way. Good luck to y'all. Be seeing ya. Everett is silent. Yeah, of course Everett doesn't say anything. Very nice. The nicest NPC <laughs> I'll probably ever make in this world. Everett's gonna not say a word. <laughs> As we walk out into the bitter cold, I'm going to offer my hat to Wink. Oh, I got my own hat, but thank you kindly. Oh, but this one's warm. I I do apologize for my little indiscretion in that. I'm not used to working under such professional circumstances. Oh, yeah, usually we save the drinking for after work. And that's fair enough. Everett is already walking up the street. Oh, looks like we're going. Where you headed, Everett? I am heading for the fishing camp. Everett's got his eye on the lead. Well... Well, hold on there. I think that's a good lead to start with, but shouldn't we get our friend here a coat? (laughs) Oh, Jib. (laughs) I sort of stop a little ways away as Jib says this. Very well. As you turn, make me an investigation check. Yeah, I'll do investigation for this. Okay. Could be perception, too. You can do either one. Whatever one's better, I'll give you. That would be perception, and that's going to be a 15. On a 15, you notice that as you look back to Jib, the other two locations are all the way across town, and the fishing camp is not too far from here. (sighs) Jib, was it? That's right. It would seem this new associate of ours is not used to the cold. Let us properly equip ourselves before. Well, you know, something else comes to me. I'm the only one who didn't come prepared. And that's on me. Uh, I can head down to the storehouse myself while y'all check out the crab scene, and I can just meet you back at the fishery, and then we can all go to the watchtower together. Splitting the party. Interesting idea. I'm quite comfortable working alone. I turn around and keep walking. Well, yeah, just let me know if there's anything you want me to pick up for you at the storehouse. Jib is torn as to which way to go. Oh, no, Jib. I kind of just threw that on Jib. <laughs> I absolutely threw that on Jib. <laughs> I love this. Jib looks in both directions. <laughs> Jib spends the whole campaign in this spot trying to make a decision. <laughs> 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 Jib 
Jib is also already the midpoint between these two characters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I look to Wink and say, y- you know where to find us? Yeah, I reckon we passed that fishery on, on the way uh, up to the tavern. Yeah, right, the one I pointed out. Real quick point of order. The tower is actually near the storehouse. Okay. Both those landmarks are on the other side of town. If that's the case, let me amend my proposition. Why don't y'all meet me at the storehouse? Instead of me coming all the way back to the fishery, and then we can hit up to the watchtower together. All right, we'll fill you in when we see you next. Much obliged. And I'm going to go after Everett. Oh, wait, is there anything you want me to pick you up at the storehouse? <laughs> we'll be there soon anyway. As you say. And Wink heads down towards the storehouse. All right. It's fun playing nice characters. Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's nice. It's just open communication. Love it. Anyway, clicks you, I mean Everett. <laughs> It's entirely up to you which scene you want to do first, I mean. I'm going to do Jib and Clicks, I mean Everett, uh, over at the fishing camp. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you enter the fishing camp. It is, since actually both of you have already taken a good look at this from a distance, you don't see anything new. Now you see ropes cast about, you see nets, you see lines of like fish that have been caught. Some of them are just drying out in the cold harsh air you notice to your left an outcropping of rock where people probably go to like sit you notice like chairs and things for people to sit and take breaks as they're shoring their boats and getting the fish off and then you see three people milling about one dwarf two humans all male all heavily bearded heavily dressed for the winter and they're just sitting there looking a little grim talking amongst themselves to your left on that wall without any check of any kind you will notice the blood pattern in the shape of a sword without introduction or talking to these people at all everett will go to inspect this scene with the blood of course you will (laughs) give me an investigation check that's only a 12, but I'm going to use my second knowledge of a past life. See a similar effect, though looking at blood, there is a twinge to Everett's eye this time as he does this. And that 12 becomes a 16. Yeah, on a 16? Uh, well, real quick, Jib, are you helping with this at all? I knew this campaign was going to be an investigation, and I didn't take investigation as a proficiency. That's a 6. You don't help. <laughs> I don't help. Maybe you go talk to people. (laughs) To be fair, he could also say how he's giving the help action. Do you want to help give the help action, or are you going to be polite? Oh, well, I want to be polite and go talk to these other people who are here. I had a feeling that's what you actually (laughs) wanted to do. (laughs) Instead of get Andy a high roll. (laughs) Um. Yeah, Andy doesn't need a higher roll on that. I'm going to take a look at these people as Andy's doing that. Okay, let me resolve Andy's roll, and then we'll start that, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. On a 16, you see, obviously, the blood pattern, and then you see where the blood pattern goes down and meets the snow-covered earth, the entire arm and part of the torso of who you probably would guess is Prim. On a 16, you can confirm shortly thereafter that it is Prim because you see his Fail Barash Union badge pinned to what little remains of what was probably once his chest. That's what you see. He's sort of slumped up against the wall and the blood is behind him? Laying down on the ground is just one peck and an arm. Mm -hmm. Painted in blood on the wall is the shape of a sword. He is directly underneath that. And everything else is gone? Of him is gone. Yeah, that's all that's left. Okay, I see. Hail, gentlemen. Hey, how are you doing? This is quite a grisly scene, isn't it? Been a lot of that lately. A lot of it. What is this voice? I love it. Yeah, (laughs) these are some good voices. (laughs) Hmm. Is there a... Well... Let me first introduce myself. My name's Jib. I'm investigating whatever happened here. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about what you might know transpired in this location? They've been killing our friends. Name's Shoddy. I'm, I'm Maeve. This is Deswin. Pleasure. And what is it you do here? The three of us. We're the ones reeling in the fish. Pretty simple work. This was a friend of yours, Prim? Hell, he's my boss. Was my boss, but a friend. Mm, friends with your boss. Is it typical around these parts for the uh, management to be part of the Union? We're all part of the Union. Do you know of any enemies that Prim might have had? Prim Donahue had his ghosts, but he had a lot of spirit. You know what I mean? Short answer, no. Not that I can say. Interesting. Can I incite that from across the room? I would say at this point, you've probably just caught in on the conversation. So yeah, you can incite that. That is a dirty 20. Yeah, you get the sense that the way Shoddy is describing that is that he's 
probably just trying to be respectful of his deceased friend and not talk too much about their personal life. How about the other two? Do they seem to have any noticeable reactions to anything Shadi is saying? The two of them are both like bowing their head. They're not making eye contact. Mm-hmm. On a dirty 20, you could probably surmise that it's more so them bowing their head because they're talking about a rough subject. You know that there's a good chance that Prim probably wasn't friends with every single person, but Shadi isn't withholding information. Shadi's probably just trying to be respectful. Mm, okay. This is the only kind of grisly event that's happened here at the fishery, I mean. Oh, they killed Cal and Hilga, Sturm, Desha, my friends. They were also fishers, fishermen? Fisher women. Fisher people? I'm not responding in character to that. <laughs> Fisher people. Fisher folk. Fishers is also fine. Fisher folk. Fishers. Fishers. Fisher folk. I love Fisher folk. We're doing that. It's canon. All right. Okay. And what can you tell me about Culver? Culver. Can't say I know him too well. So you met him? One of them smug socialite types. Mm. Uh, You see him at the uphill climb once in a while. He keeps away from most people. Thinks he's better than everybody. Heard a rumor he was trying to scoop up our company here. Get rid of our union. I heard the same thing. I looked to Everett. You have anything you want to add here? These blood swords. Where are the others? Might be hard to see them now. Two around this way. It points. You know, I mentioned that the rock kind of gives way to a little, like, covered area. On the other side of that, which would be the side of the cliff, so you have to walk around. Okay. You might find two there, but sadly, Cal's and Helga's, they were the first two to go. I doubt they'd still be there, washed away by the tides. I sort of point in that direction to Jib, giving a we should probably go look anyways gesture. I nod to Everett. Well, gentlemen, you've been very helpful today. Just one more question for you. Don't you think it seems odd that uh, they were killing your co-workers and nobody seemed to get interested until they killed a manager? How's that seem odd? That's the one thing about this makes any sense? Oh, you're right on that. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. One question for you. What's got you interested? I'm here for work, same as you. So you work with that company? Vetus, that's right. And how do you people feel about Vetus? We are slow to trust. That we are. The third person who has yet to speak says. But Shadi, I think it's fair to say. We're just hoping you all do the right thing. Find out who's doing this. We want vengeance. Vengeance. Mm. I'll roll insight on that. Fucking of course. <coughs> I mean, Jeppy, when you write dialogue like this, how right. can I not just... How can I not? <laughs> right? <laughs> how can I not? <laughs> who's writing? Literally every other sentence is suspicious. <laughs> uh, that's a 19. Okay, on a 19, he just wants vengeance. Sorry, which one was that? That was... That was Desawin. Desawin, thank you. I'm making a note of that. Vengeance. Batman. All right, thank you. Where are they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Before Everett leaves this scene, you said that there was like a badge or something on the body? It's a, his name. Using the word badge lightly, I mean, this is fucking D&D. It's not like a run-of-the-mill picture of him with like a nice logo on it. It's clearly a worker's badge. But it looks important. It's the badge that identifies him. It's not like it's a key card or something, though, right? No, not a key card. It's a little thing with his name on it. Might as well be a Hi, I'm Prim sticker. (laughs) That's how important it is. Got it. I was going (laughs) to steal it, but never mind. Well, anyone could have planted that on anybody's arm, I suppose. Mm. I. Oh, my God. Uh, The name looks like handwritten on the badge. Give me an investigation followed by insight. Okay. Yikes. Investigation, that's only a six... If you're a little high enough insight, it's not going to matter. Insight 21. Yeah, on a low six, I mean, you're just looking at it and it's a badge. You're not noticing anything wild about it. But with it enough insight, you can tell this doesn't seem to be forged in any way. This badge is weather-worn enough to have been worn by someone, likely Prim, who spends a lot of time outdoors working at the fishery. But that doesn't mean this is Prim's arm. <laughs> That's a good fucking point. Seeing Jib come over and make that comment, Everett will just sort of scoff. You have quite the eyes to be suspicious with. I mm. like this line of thinking, Jib. Well, thank you. Come. Let's go. And we're going to look for the other blood swords. I'll go ahead and say, as you round the corner, you see two more. They're spaced from each other, but they're both, you notice, near the shoreline. It's like the shore meets the rocks, and then you see these blood swords. Both of them are more faded than the one you had just seen, obviously. One more than the other, but to you, that without even any roll, that just indicates the passage of time. However, as you get closer, I will welcome both of you to make another investigation check. And you can do this together, so Jimmy, you can give Andy advantage if you want to give That's a great idea. I'll fucking take it. The first one was only an eight. Go look at that one. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Edward says, Edward says nothing, but looks at the other one. That's the help action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy, I've missed your one-liners the so time- much. Oh, <laughs> so good. Oh, the timing is so good. Anyways, that's only a 14. <laughs> okay, cool. Not a great roll, but... Because you've given me a laugh, I'm going to give this to you. When Jib points out the other very obvious to see bloodstain, maybe because you're just ignoring the simplicity of his help, you actually don't look at it and instead you look a little bit down and you see glinting against the rock, you see this small nugget of ore. I'll allow you an arcana roll, but I will say that at this point it is going to be quite hard to surmise what that is. Boy, I wish I didn't blow through those two d6s in the first ten minutes of this campaign. (laughs) Cool. Off the bat, that's actually pretty good 19. On a 19, you know it's definitely ore, and you can tell that it's nothing that you've ever seen before, but it has a red glimmer to it, and something about this tells you that it is likely magical in nature, but other than that, it's really hard to know exactly what it is called and what its purpose is. Strange. I'll pick it up. It's inert in your hands. It's still glowing faintly. I'll try and picture this and remember the scene as best I can before I go and grab for it. You said it was basically like right below where the stain started. Yeah, and actually you can go ahead and roll me... I think insight would work for this. Just fuck it, do it. I don't care. Whatever. (laughs) It's just my campaign. I don't care. Roll a d20 and add right. whatever you want. (laughs) (laughs) Player's choice. Jeez, that's a 20. Dirty 20. Honestly, all I'm having you roll insight for is just whether or not you can tell that this was clearly left behind. Right. By accident, likely by the person that committed the crime. Or people. Interesting. The way you kind of found it, Mm -hmm. left there, semi-buried on the shore there, Mm -hmm. it seems like it may have fallen out of a pocket or slipped from someone's hand as they were leaving. I'll sort of subtly pass it over to Jib. What have you got there? Jib, go ahead and make me Arcana. I'll give you an opportunity as well. Oh, man. 14. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> Nothing new. Uh, Less. <laughs> never seen anything like this. I regret to admit, nor do I. Maybe Wink would know. I wonder what Wink's up to. Huh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Let's check in with Wink. Wink, you are walking up to the storehouse. Pretty run-of-the-mill building. It's a long building. Windows adorning its sides, and the doorway is... Left open, usually pretty welcome to anyone that works with Vetus for now, kind of repurposed for anything that Vetus needs. As you walk in, you're going to notice a guard, and he walks right up to you. Hello there. Howdy. I was expecting more of you. Oh, the others are right behind me. They're just checking out the crime scene. But I I reckon I needed to find myself something warm to put over this leather vest of mine. Never been this far north in my life. So, please, if you don't mind, uh, where are my manners? Periwinkle Wuggins? Y'all can call me Wink. Good to meet you. And you all? Yellen, nice to meet you. I'm sure you made quite an impression on Kessa. Not coming here with a coat. But look, I made a mistake or two in my time, too. Not a big deal. Well, I may not look like the type of person who decides to make a career change into adventuring, but, you know, I got myself a taste of some excitement and can't put it down quite. So, if you could just direct me to the small-sized, warm coats... I would be most grateful. I can relate with that. Buddy, I'll do you one better than just a small coat. Come here. And he starts walking to the back room. You follow him. Yeah, sure. You can make a perception check just to kind of see what your surroundings are. Sure. Just a 10. On a 10, it's a bunch of boxes. Think end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Gotcha. (laughs) Just like boxes in the floor. Crates. Crates with things, yeah. It is a storehouse. He walks up and he stops and he just points to a box and says, Well, you can do the honors basically a gift to you. Sure. I take my rusty rapier off my belt and pry the box open. All right. And take a look inside. Nice. Yeah, the box pops open and in it, you actually see three smaller boxes, Mm -hmm. presumably one for each of you, but but in it, you see three sets of warm clothes, so a coat, lanterns, blankets, and then underneath those three boxes, you see one grappling hook. And you also just see some gear for, like, ice fishing. All right, I'll strap that grappling hook onto my belt for certain. And Yallen was the feller's name? Yeah, it's Yallen. Yeah. Kessa wanted to make sure you all had what you needed. Say, Yallen, I don't really want to leave any part of my body exposed in this sort of climate. I don't suppose you have any sort of uh, foot gloves, would you? <laughs> <sighs> Boy, looks down at your feet. Didn't really look before. You really came unprepared, huh? Looks down at his 
puts his foot up to yours, realizes it's not going to work. Unfortunately, friend, that's going to be something you have to provision on your own. I guess it gave you some funds, right? Ah, oh, that you did. I jangle my coins a bit. How much is this going to run me? pair of boots around here? Yeah, they don't cost too much. Probably not even eight silver. I'll hand you Alan a gold piece. Well, if you can rustle some of those up for me, I'd be most gracious. Oh, I don't know if we have them. I think you'd have to go to the store. Let me take a look. Oh, beg pardon. No, 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 you bring up a good point, friend. If I've got them, they're yours. Let me ruffle around a little bit. He looks into some boxes. While he's doing that, go ahead and roll perception. And he'll do the same, but with disadvantage because he is doing something else. Oh, I oh, got a fuck. four. He got a fucking nine, and then it was disadvantaged in that 20 that he just doesn't get to have. All right. Uh. Unfortunately, neither of you hear the rustling in the rafters above as an assassin drops down what? in between the two of you. Okay. Oh, God. So this is initiative then. Go ahead. <laughs> it is. Yeah, what do you got? I only got a seven. You got a seven. Okay. And Yalin got a four. Jesus, fuck. Yeah, you guys are dead. The assassin got a 14, so he, the assassin's gonna go first. Assassin's gonna go twice. Is what it is. Yeah, yeah, the assassin is gonna go twice because it's a surprise round. In the surprise round is gonna go uh, immediately for Yalin. 14 to hit, which ties the AC, and he will do three slashing damage. And then he will go again. The assassin looks a little frenzied, looking around, and will kind of notice that you are on each side. Right. So the assassin will turn around to come at you. Okay. And on a 15, does that hit you? That's my AC. That is your AC. Okay, and that is four slash damage. Oh, what in tarnation? (laughs) (laughs) What in tarnation indeed. Wink, it's your turn. Now... uh... You folk in the north don't seem to have much of a sense of humor. Let me tell you a good one from down south. And I will cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter upon this assassin. Oh my god. Uh, If they could roll me a wisdom save, please. Unfortunately, it is... And you said what kind of a throw? Wisdom. Yeah, well, actually, the mod is minus three. So it's a 16. Still fucking passes. No, sorry. (laughs) All right. (laughs) <laughs> is what it is. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. That is what you do. Yalin's turn. Yalin is going to immediately... Wait, did they say what their joke was? Make a bad joke right now, because it failed. Fuck. Um, I don't know. Did, 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 you, hear, did you hear the one about... <laughs> did you hear the one about the fucking... Did you hear the one about the, the <laughs> asshole who jumped down at the ceilings and stabbed people? <laughs> Also, the fact that Wink, I think, is your first player character to swear is pretty remarkable. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it fails. Uh, That's Yalin's turn. Yalin is immediately going to step into action, take out his sword, and definitely hits on a dirty 20. And that is eight slashing damage. Back to the assassin. Going to go back to unaffected by your shitty joke. At this point, the assassin does not deem you at all a threat. Fair enough. And we'll go back to Jalen. Does hit again on a 16. And this time it is five damage. Jalen's looking pretty hurt, as you can tell. Your turn. All right. Well, if you're not in the mood for japery, then I guess it's going to be stabbery. Here we come. <laughs> so that's the joke you should have told I'm going to get on the other side of this guy. Does a 19 hit? Oh, yeah, 19 absolutely fucking hits. Okay, so I stab at this guy's ass with my rapier because that's what I can reach for seven points of seven piercing damage. Right in the ass. Seven ass or no ass is exactly how much health this thing had. Wink. Tell us a tale of how this assassin came to fall in Icewind Dale. I got a joke for you. <laughs> I've been called a pain in the ass. You want to know why? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I jab my rapier <laughs> through oh. the assassin's butt. <laughs> All right. The assassin is no more. And I guess their entrails spill onto the floor. Oh, my God. Ugh. All right. Whew. You okay, friend? Uh, well, I got a little bit of a gash on my chest. Uh, you know, been better, but certainly been worse. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, ho- hold on. 
Yalen will actually step outside and ring at a bell and kind of beckon, but you can't see what he's beckoning. Mm -hmm. And then he comes back inside. That never, that's never happened. We've never just been attacked like this. Strange. Well, now we don't have been. I'm going to turn the body over. Do y'all know this feller? Can't say that I do, but let's take a look here. Yalen will bend down to give the body an inspection. You're welcome to do the same. I will roll investigation here. Yeah, you definitely should. Would we hear that bell? The two of you are getting close. You definitely heard the bell. Probably towards the end of this investigation check is when the two of you will walk in. So it's a 21 investigation. Cool. Yeah. Uh, 21. I mean, you noticed already when this person attacked you that they just wore a robe. Hmm. But now you notice on this robe a symbol that you have yet to see, but it is a pretty simple symbol of a sword. Very small right along the inner shoulder of this, and it's on both sides. What happened here? This here ne'er-do-well jumped uh, myself and my friend Yalen here, right as they was trying to find me some, uh, uh, uh some, uh, I'm sorry, what's the word again? For, uh, for foot gloves? We call those boots, buddy. Flippers. Oh. We call them oh. boots. <laughs> flippers. We're all flippers, because it's Jib. Well, <laughs> pardon my manners. My name's Jib. Nice to meet you. Yalen, was it? Yalen, yeah. Nice to meet you. I just work here at the storehouse for now. Does this kind of thing happen often? This has never happened. I've never been attacked like this. I'm guessing... Hold on one second. Quim should be here in a second. I just called him over. You welcome to take a look at this body. In the meantime, though, your friend uh, picked out some stuff for you we had in storage. Yeah, they got warm clothes, lanterns, blankets, all sort of goodies. Very kind of them. Also, on the 21 investigation... Anything else on the assassin's body in terms of... Loot? In terms of loot, or perhaps... Probably not, but like, any correspondence? Any more weird red rocks? This is the Elder Scrolls edition. You see a letter... From the Dark uh, Brotherhood? Telling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is nothing. I will say that because you rolled so high, I'll kind of allow a little bit of insight, just because your roll was really good. You could tell that whoever this is and wherever they came from... It's a very simple group. If they are sent to do something like this, they are not sent with much, besides maybe a weapon to carry out their task. You were a nice enough person in the past life, or I think you dealt with enough ruffians to kind of glean that from this body. Yellen, was it? Yeah. Tell me, how long have you been working in this storeroom that you did not notice this assailant above? It's usually my post. I mean, I'm not here every day, but I've been here all day. They were quiet. Could be that I was distracted helping your friend here. But, uh, hey, do me a favor. Don't repeat that in front of Quinn. Kind of want to roll insight on that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, go for, go for it if you want to. <laughs> I'll roll insight. Uh, that's a 15. Yeah, on a 15, you see a storeroom guard that probably isn't very good at what they do and is probably nervous about yet another black mark on their record. One more thing to put on the old conspiracy board. Yeah, you better get a fucking 3,000 page notebook the way you are with these conspiracies. <laughs> As Yalen says this, actually, Quinn, the person you were supposed to meet on the watchtower, comes running in. He's a male ranger, relatively tall, long hair. Sorry, I said ranger. I meant to say elf. But now you know their class, too. <laughs> I don't even know why I put ranger, but anyway, it's there. That detail's there. Quinn will storm in and. Yeah, and what's the matter? We were attacked. I. I Never seen anything like this. Have you ever been attacked since we started this post? You three. You're the help from Kessa, huh? Yeah, we are, Quim. We've been meaning to conversate with you. It's good that you came by here. As my friend Yallen here was saying, who was most helpful in dispatching this here slasher, they just dropped down from the ceiling and just went to work trying to cut Yallen and I up. You're keeping a watch on things. Do you know what any of this might be about? Quim will nod to you and then immediately turn to Yallen. This one got the jump on you. We'll talk later. And then turn back to you, I don't know. I don't know what this could be about. But I... You notice Quim trails off as Quim looks down at the body. Quim will bend down and lift the arm of the assailant to notice the symbol. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. I think I was right. The three of you, come with me. And he will start walking out. I follow. Oh, I, I make sure I get my coat on before I do. Yeah, get your little coat on there, <laughs> yeah. That's what all this was about. Oh, uh, yeah, and you make sure you find me those boots. You found me those boots and I'll be back in a jiffy. No, I, I'm sorry. I would have said that Yalen would have been getting those out when the assassin dropped. So, like, I'll just give you boots. Like, you got boots at the end of that scuffle. Okay. okay. That was your reward for killing the beast. You get your, your experience points and then you got boots. 
on your little item screen. Oh, these things feel so strange. I don't know how most folk wear these things. Just for clarity, we are doing milestone. We're not actually doing experience. Let me just make that a <laughs> point of order. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wild if we were doing experience, though? <laughs> oh, my God. No fucking way. <laughs> Can't even imagine. I just I'm go good. out and start shooting bears. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, right. Just grind. Let me just grind uh, a little bit here before we even start the campaign. <laughs> Yeah. Anything the three of you want to do before... Yeah. Can I just give, like, a passing perception to see if there's anything maybe I can get off this body that Wink didn't already get? But I have a feeling the answer's going to be no. I mean, go for it. That is a 24. So, nothing new, but I will say that because you are looking and it might be of interest to you, there is a scimitar. Mm. Ooh, a simi. You are welcome to loot it, but you should be quick. Quinn is walking out. <laughs> Sorry, since you said it's a scimitar, the sword on their... Garb, was it a curved sword like the sword they were using? Nope. It, it's a, like, it doesn't look like, how do I put this? It's your regular cruciform sword. Yeah, and it's not a fucking work of art. It's like a crudely drawn sword. Okay. Yeah, Everett doesn't care for that, and he is going to... <laughs> this gave me, like, cat vibes. Like, you get a nice toy for your cat, and like, I don't care for this. And then they <laughs> jump in the box. Anyway. Hmm. Your hmm tells me you want to roll something else. Do you see a leaf blow by you want to roll insight on? Or? I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right, just making sure. Otherwise, Quim, without saying a word, is going to lead you up. The watchtower is very nearby. As we're walking, I just want to catch up to Quim and say, Now, I saw you take a bit of a harsh demeanor with Yallin over there. And I know I'm new around here, but that there goober got the drop on both of us. And I'm pretty hard to catch by surprise. I, I think you ought to give Yallin the benefit of the doubt there. They was doing a good job, they were. I'm hard to take by surprise. Rolls of four. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, the bard has been known to exaggerate. News at 11. Yeah. No, that's cool. Quim will say, it's very kind of you to stick up for Yallin. Just say this, not the first of Yallin's mistakes, but you're new here. You signed up, probably out of the goodness of your own heart. You're working with Kessa. That'll be the last I talk to him of it. You know, I'll say one thing more on this. It's often easier to see someone's faults than their virtues, and I might not have made it out in such pristine shape if it weren't for Yallin there. Fair enough. He was quite brave. I'm sure he was brave in the only way he knows how to be. Come on, let's go. All right. As you've concluded that conversation, you see the interior of the watchtower. It's run-of-the-mill, spiraling staircase. You see, you know, maybe a guard or two at the bottom, maybe talking with each other. Otherwise, you go up the staircase, lit by torches as you go along. Finally, the four of you reach the top, and Quim will say, I mean, it was just a theory, but... No thanks to you showing up and them playing their hands. I think we may be onto something here. Did you happen to see the symbol on that assassin? I reckon they had a little sword on their robes there. Did you uh, recognize those swords from anywhere? Did they look like the same bloodstains? Yeah, they are the exact same sword. It would appear that you have... Yes. <laughs> Andy takes this long pause and Jimmy just goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kyle. Take your line, Everett. Do it, do it, do it. It would appear these swords the same as the stains we have found at the scene of the crime. Exactly. Now what do y'all know about that? <sighs> Felt like grasping at straws first. That's why I didn't really bother Kessa with any of it, but there's a cult nearby, right over there. This fucking cult. And from the top of this watchtower, Quinn points across the way. The three of you would recognize this location immediately. The cliff way goes to the fishery, and then there was that hill that went in two directions. Straight ahead was the uphill climb. And then to the right was the other building that in the mist you couldn't quite make out. From this vantage point, all you can really see is a large, I'm going to put it in air quotes, castle-like building. Like, don't think classic castle. Like a fort? Perfect word. Yes. It's a fort. Done. A fort. <laughs> Easy. Pleasure doing business. It's like Assassin's Creed. We went to the top of the tower and got a new Yeah, map. now you just, yeah, now okay. exactly. Yep. And all the other billion <laughs> Ubisoft games just like it. So anyway, yeah, he points out and... Over there is where they are. There's not many of them. At least what we can tell. They don't really come out. They've been around here for a long time, but all we know is they're called the Black Sword. Somehow, didn't really think that these sword markings were... I don't know. They don't really wave that kind of thing around. Mm. Anyway, the night of the murder, I was on duty, and the care, as it used to be called, lit up. And the lights went out, and the next day, we had another body. I don't know how well you all know Kessa, but that thin of evidence doesn't really sit well with her. So I kept it to myself. Figured I needed more. But now the three of you come here trying to look for answers and I don't know. And then an assassin comes out wearing that same sword. Now that 
individual. They weren't familiar to you? I've never seen that person in my life. All right, well, that's just... I'm going to roll insight on all of that. Do I believe any of this? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, Andy. This is our co-worker. <laughs> I've never seen that person in my life. This is not... Like, I, it's... Not everything's a Scooby-Doo moment. <laughs> okay, he will not word it that way. I'll just say no. So they ain't from around here. This seems a small enough town that everybody knows everybody. You would think the port brings in new people occasionally. You know, I hadn't considered that. That's how it is back in Noralu. Not quite the way it is in Cary Denival. Maybe someone else from the Ten Towns, but usually they come in by land. Visitors are pretty rare here. Everybody knows almost everybody. This person's a stranger. I feel pretty confident saying that. And these black sword folk, they don't come into town for nothing? We don't even know how many of them there are. The lights almost never go on. Guessing it's not many, but who knows. Perhaps we should pay them a visit? I would, if I were you. Perhaps there would be a way to infiltrate without making it known. If we do not know the number, the occupants, their capabilities, this could be folly. That's the way I'd play it. Well, if we head back down to the storeroom, there's a rope. I reckon it's a little big for me, but... One of y'all, it might fit. We could paint some swords on our arms. I leave it to you to find out. I know that we fashioned you with a grappling hook. Should be sufficient to scale the walls, but Kessa hired you. You're the professionals in this. I just sit here and watch. You know, I've never been a member of a cult before, but from what I understand, they are usually pretty tight-knit groups. Probably notice if we don't belong there with them. You're taking a gamble. Again, we don't know how many there are. If they're a big enough community, maybe. But if not, I suspect they would know you don't belong. All right. And I don't think they'd like that. And the fact that they already came after you, I don't know. You play it how you want. I guess if you three end up dead, more evidence that I'm right. Are we inside right now? No, you're at the top of the watchtower, looking out over all of Cared Got it. You're welcome to make a perception check if you want to see anything else new, but... I would like to, as we're having this conversation, see if I can see, like, anybody milling about as I look down over this scene. That's an... At 20, I guess. <laughs> I mean, this is not the kind of town where people mill about. So maybe it would be more suspicious if there was somebody. Because you rolled high, I do want to reward the roll in some ways. You now get a good look at this fort, which used to be a place called the Care. So you look at the Care. You see actually that it's a little dilapidated from here. You can't tell to what degree because you can only see one side of it. But you notice some of the walls are a little crumbled and like some of those pieces of the wall that would jut up out into like watchtowers along the way a couple of them are completely smoldered over basically those are called parapets thank you (laughs) you notice that some of the parapets are destroyed or crumbling that's about it as far as the remainder of care de novelle you've surveyed it before and you've taken in quite a bit already and you, you notice basically the same buildings and the same lack of people milling about all right well sounds like an adventure off we go cool Anything else? Oh, yep. Allow me to rephrase something. Jib, again, your keen observation for suspicion leads me to believe that the robe, this is not a good solution. Perhaps if we simply observe as much as we can before trying to get any closer than need be. That's not a bad idea. I was thinking we could knock on the front door and ask to join them. You hear, like, a heavy... From Everett. Although, I suppose they do already know who we are. That may not work. And this is my point. I ain't never been in a murder cult. Don't seem like my style. Oh, me neither. Don't get the wrong idea. I think I'm with Everett on this one. I hate to be rude, but I have a job to do here, and I've given you the tools you need for this, so why don't you figure it out on the way, huh? I consider giving Quim an obscene, elvish gesture, but I don't do it. Instead, I say, oh, sorry to be in the way. And I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Passive aggressive jib is the best jib. So with uh, Yeah, Everett's down the stairs. I tip my hat and I follow. Polite as always. Quim gives a curt, quick nod, and that's it. And which direction was the inn? Dennis Rest? From where we are right now. Dennis Rest, the inn, is a little bit to the west and south of where you are. It is probably. 10 minutes away of a walk. Otherwise, the care is 45. When we exit this tower, I look around at our surroundings. Before we discuss further, I suggest we become unseen. How so? We need to get inside, Jib. Well, yeah. 
But did you have a particular method you were thinking of? Or? I'm literally just trying to get us to go to the inn. Well, why, why do you suppose we need to go inside? Does not occur to you that we have been here all of an hour and... Hour and 56 minutes according to Audacity, but whatever. <laughs> an assailant was already sent to foil our job? Now... I'm not sure. Something about this seems a little too convenient. I don't want to make no assumptions. But if y'all want to step it somewhere private, do a little more conversating, perhaps bait out any more would-be interferers, I shall follow your lead. I think this wise. Okay. You can head to dinner's rest if you'd like. Yeah. And as we're traveling, I'm going to try and keep a real sharp eye as best I can. Just if anybody's watching us anything suspicious like that even like looking out windows or give me perception and then you can follow it up with an insight perception 22 give me the insight insight a 10 oh, well. that's a low insight Good. roll for me <laughs> i was hoping you'd roll high insight so i could tell you what's going on here but instead we're going to add to your fucking conspiracy board because i'm not giving you too many details all right i mean i don't understand why i'm rolling two rolls but that's fine so on the perception you notice a bunch of people are staring from their windows but you lack the insight to understand why that's why you're rolling insight cool are they watching us? As I suspected, we are already being watched at every corner. I mean, on a 10, these are the people that live here. Dialogue stands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fucking Everett is so paranoid. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we are being watched at every corner. And you guys thought Alwyn was bad. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my God. As a small town, so I'll tell you, small towns tend to look with some unkindness towards strangers. It didn't need the insight roll. That's what you were rolling for, <laughs> to surmise that exact fact. <laughs> oh, speaking of red rocks, Everett, show Wink the red rocks. As you say that, like, you are now at the doorway to Dinah's rest. Not out the end. And I open the door. Cool. The door creaks open. Maybe Wink and Jib, you've both probably been in an inn or two, and you know that a good number of them are connected to taverns, but not Dinah's Rest. Dinah's Rest is very quiet. There's just the person behind the counter and four doors on the downstairs, and then a staircase that leads upstairs as well. And the person behind the counter uh, who didn't get a name, whose name... I take it y'all dinner! <laughs> Thank you, Scala. Dinner's Rest is owned by Diniv. <laughs> yep, that, that tracks. Diniv is a tiefling. Why not? Let's do that. And welcomes you in. Hello, travelers. Care for a room. Oh, God, this fucker's suspicious. Hey, that's racist. It's not the tiefling, it's the voice. Oh, just the voice. <laughs> just trying to differentiate. Hello, travelers. Welcome to my inn. I'm not going to stab you in your sleep. I'm Dinib. You can trust me. That's what you sound like. Yeah. Our prices are rather reasonable. It's uh, five silver and one stabbing. I mean, five silver for one. <laughs> 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 no, Dinib just tells you the price. It's five silver for a room. Oh, Kessa told us she had already arranged for our stay. Oh, you're with Kessa. Yes. Upstairs, second door on the left. Sorry. It's only one room. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to small spaces. All right. Is there anything else I can help you with? No. Why'd you do it? <laughs> Why'd you kill them? <laughs> Dinev goes, because. And then there's a sword <laughs> marking on their hand. Just kidding. <laughs> that's not canon. Worse ending. Game over screen. Yeah. <laughs> you have died. Otherwise, the three of you can go and retire to the room to have a private conversation because Everett needs to get a fucking grip. And yeah, feel free to have that conversation in private, even though no one's on the street. I've said it three times. Can this count for a short rest? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to... Real quick, actually, because I didn't mention this. You got in at dusk, I would say, is when your boat arrived. Oh. It's evening, but it's not supremely late. So, like, absolutely short rest. Go for it. Okay. Wink, just for their own benefit, will sing their song of rest. Bit of something they've been working on about this whole endeavor. Did you take damage? Yeah. That got stabbed by the assassin. Oh. oh. I didn't even notice. Are you all right there? <laughs> oh, nothing a little music won't fix. Oh, we sailed up north, cared and a ball where folk getting left with their blood on the wall. <laughs> but that brother sword killer gonna meet their match when Jib Wink and Everett gonna make that catch. Oh, you better watch out, you blood sword slasher. You might run fast, but we run faster. I have to think of something else to come after that. <laughs> you get there. <laughs> Plenty That's enough good. for you to get your song of rest bonus. <laughs> 
That's amazing. I heal, like, <laughs> my entire health bar. Excellent. The first thing that they do, though, when entering this small inn is sing a song to themselves. <laughs> that is insane. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm hurt. I gotta sing. <laughs> so good. How am I gonna mend my wounds if I don't sing? How do you expect this huge gash in my shoulder to heal? <laughs> You notice that the room has a number of beds. It's purposed for multiple people to stay in. Let's call it six beds in there. Yeah, Wink immediately throws down their belongings, gets the banjo presumably out, and just starts going for it while the two of you get your bearings and figure out which beds you want to hang out in. Is there a window in this room? Yes, there is a window. The window would face just a row of houses and a street. You wouldn't see the harbor that you came in, the storehouse or any of that, or the care or the uphill climb. That's all on the other side of the building. Great. Is there a curtain or blinds or something I can close? Because I know how much it means to you. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just put a curtain in this fucking room. (laughs) Great, I'm going to do that. Thank you. (laughs) It's a pretty nice view out there. Yeah, well, you don't fucking get to see it, Jim. (laughs) I peer out the window and then I close the curtains. Turning around I pull out the oar. We found this at the scene. Hmm. Wink, feel free to make an arcana check for me if you'd like. I most certainly will. That's gonna be an 18. Alright. Unfortunately, nothing new but you independently can also surmise that this is some sort of magical item. Well, I know a bit of magic myself but this ain't nothing like what I'm used to. Strange. Indeed. What is the consistency of it? Is it smooth? Is it sort of jagged? Like, what kind of rock is this? I would say it's kind of like in the middle. It's clearly been mined from somewhere. It has enough roughness to it, but it is a pretty stone. It does almost have a glow of red, like a shimmer of red to it. Mm. But its texture is rough. It's not been carved in any way or manufactured. This was a nugget. And it's not like crystalline. What do you mean by crystalline? I'm sorry. I just Is it like a geode or does it have like veins? Sure, yeah. It, it has veins. It has been mined from somewhere and not yet manufactured. Okay, cool. That much you can tell just by touching it and looking at so it. So it is a block of redstone from the game Minecraft. <laughs> I've actually, call me crazy, never played Minecraft, but anyway. So that's why magic's going away. Anyway, what do y'all want to do now that you're in this inn having a private conversation? That again would have been private outside. Sorry, Andy, I have to fuck with you a little bit. Oh, I know. No, you're, you're true to your character. It's <laughs> fine. It's totally fine. Well, Everett, you want to talk inside. Something you think we should discuss? I do not know what your opinions are, but I do not trust Kessa. I do not trust Quim. I do not trust Vetus. Do you trust me? I look at him with huge eyes. <sighs> I am used to working alone, this is true. But I am not beneath admitting that we have been put to this task together. That being said, the notion that being assailed the first day here by a presumably a cult which this place has no true information about, and yet Kassa herself was not inclined to investigate this matter whatsoever. They are either hiding much more than they know, or deeply negligent. Well, it hardly seems like Kessa's job to do that. I think that's why she hired us. I'll say something don't pass the smell test around here, though. The fact that they knew we was coming, where we was gonna be, it all seemed a little too convenient. So I think we should investigate this cult, yes, but right now I want to keep an open mind. This is wise. Well, I think it's pretty clear the cult has something to do with this. He can't deny that the sword on their arm looks just like the sword on the wall. It didn't look like that sword was too hard to draw, all I have to say. Somebody could be engaging in a wee bit of misdirection. I kind of draw the same sword in dust on the (laughs) bedside table. Nice. Yeah, you're right. (sighs) And then there is the matter of the speaker. The town speaker, Kranik, has gone missing along the same line of time as the murders. There's that Culver fellow as well. Seem like there might be something more there. So what's our next step? May I suggest this? As someone who has experience with patience when getting to know an adversary, we should stake out this cult, most important of which to gather information of how many and how capable they are. I reckon that's as good a plan as any. Let's hop to it. Alright. Okay, so I'm assuming the three of you then will make your way out of the inn and start 
getting closer to the care, the cultist's fort, as you are now learning it to be. Yes, if it's getting dark, Wink can't really see well in the dark, so... I will say it's not going to be a problem at all. There will be enough light throughout the town where you'll be able to walk around very easily, safely, not a problem. Right. And then when you get to the bottom of the hill that leads to the care, it'll be a little dark, but the care will be lit. Mm. Yeah, on the path from Care de Navelle to the care proper, Wink will, just so they can see the road, conjure some dancing lights. They'll pluck a chord on the banjo, and from each of the three strings they pluck, three dancing lights will shoot out of the instrument and begin Very cool. circling around them, and they will sort of direct them just so they can see the path. That is tasty flavor. I love it. Is there anything else the three of you want to do before you get closer? That is very quaint, but when we approach, you should put that out. Well, how am I going to see? You are going to be unseen. You can see this place from here. It is not that dim. I reckon you're right. All right, I'll trust you. Let me put it another way. We would not want another of these assailants to surprise us. No, no argument from me. Just uh, let me know when you think uh, I'll feel it out myself. If there does come a point where we get close enough to the keep that I can dismiss the lights and still be able to see what's going on, I will do that. Cool. All right. You're starting to get close, so feel free, everyone, to make me a perception check. Before I do that, is there any other buildings nearby or it's literally just this building? There are no other buildings, but go ahead and give me a perception check and we'll see what you find. 19. 14. Shit. That's only a 10. That's okay. I'd say you're far enough away where, like, Wink could tell you whatever they find and wink on a 19 you see two guards posted out at the larger kind of doorway that is definitely shut it is a gate for all intents and purposes when i say guards they are cultists but they are acting as guards they are wearing the same clothes that the assassin is wearing you see two large torches on the other side of them and then you know you see the remainder of the building as it goes off to each side and you notice on the left side there are two parapets that are still together and on the right side, there's only one. Otherwise, all of the others are smashed and in shambles. On the left side as well, to your left, you see you know, large snow banks that you could probably perch on to get a better view. Not 100% sure, though, if you'll be able to see inside or beyond those parapets to see what lies within the walls. Mm. Do we see weapons on these guards? On the 19, I'll say on one of them, you don't. But again, they're wearing robes that could be easily concealed. And the other guard does have what looks like a quarter staff kind of resting against the wall next to them. Okay. Now it looks like there's a couple guards up there, and seems like there's a destroyed bit of the fort over there we might be able to sneak in that ways, or we could try and climb up that other ways. The higher vantage may be a good place to start. We could do a good loop all the way around the building, see what else there might be to see. Does it look like these guards have noticed this? I presume that, Wink, as soon as you notice them, you put your dancing lights away? Yes. Then no, you're good. If you get closer, if you try to go up that snowbank, or if you circle close by, I'll have you roll stealth. As I said, the higher vantage? Okay. So, just to be clear, are you going for the snowbank, or are you going to try and grapple up the side of the building? I want to start with a snowbank. And then, as Wink said, from there, maybe see if we can go around and see all sides. All right, cool. Jib, Wink, you cool with that plan? You going to follow? Yep. Yeah, I'll follow. All right, let's make a group stealth check. 19. Nice. I also got a 19. Oh, I'm actually pretty good at the 16. (laughs) Okay, yeah, these guards might as well be on another fucking planet. You're fine. Cool. Cool. You make it to the top of the snowbank. No problem. From there, you can't, unfortunately, see into the fort, like on the other side of the parapets and the walls. But you can see just how big it is. It is basically a pentagon shape. Again, the parapets are a little disheveled and damaged. While you can't really make out what exactly it is, you can tell that on the other side of the wall, there is an open area. You cannot see what's in it. You can see glints of snow, so you know that beyond the walls is an open area. And then on the back side is what is probably the actual building proper. And we can't see over and into it, but can we see the top of it at all or not? Like the top of the parapets and the walls themselves, like where they go to? Yeah, if anybody would be standing up there. Yeah, you do not see any guards. I would like to pull out from my Monster Hunter's pack my spyglass. You see a small, very 
ornate and detailed brass spyglass. And I would like to see if there is anything else I can gain from this vantage. Yeah, sure. If there's any, like, windows or anything. Why don't you roll me perception with advantage on this? First one is a two. Second one is... A20. Dirty? That doesn't matter. A nat 20. A two with another digit next to it. 12? Ha. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Total of 26. Cool. Uh, on that, again, you can be 100% sure now with the spyglass that like, no one is circling anywhere. Got it. Whether it's the back, front, sides. No one is circling. From what you can see, which you're reasonably confident is everything outside with the exception of that courtyard area, mm-hmm. the only two guards or two cultists that are out and about are the ones at the gate. I would imagine that you would feel pretty confident in going up the wall and not being spotted. Okay. I turn to Wink and Jib. I can see no one else save for these two in front. Okay. Well, I think it's time to grapple on up. Indeed. And I chuck the grappling hook up over the wall. All right, cool. I'm going to have you all do a group stealth check for this, too, just because you're making a little bit of noise. You know, a little clink of the grappling hook. Let's go ahead and add some tension to this moment. There we go. It's an 18 here. I got a 9. You said there we go. I thought it was going to be good. It's my first low roll of the game. Stealth, that's a 23. Cool. It was a low DC. Your average easily beats it. Yeah, you make it over. The three of you settle onto the wall. Why don't you all make me a perception check, and I'll describe what you see as you get over the wall. Oh, hey, that's a nat one. But wait... Ooh, ooh, yes, there it is. I'm a halfling. Let's do it. Better, an eight. (laughs) Mine was a 13. This was perception? Yep. 17. Yeah, on a 17. Now you can tell clearly it is a courtyard. You are standing on the left side of the building, so you're looking down into this courtyard. On your right, you see a large gate. It's the same gate that leads out to the front. You can see that it's the same two cultists, so you can confirm with certainty that that is the front gate. On the other side of this courtyard, tucked off in the top right corner, a small building with wrought ironed windows. It's not a prison. It looks to be a stable or kennel of some sort. Just to the left of that on the back side of the courtyard is a very large structure with a non-see-through iron gate. And does it look like there's anyone down there or it looks... There is no one in sight. You hear the wind, and there doesn't seem to be anyone milling about at all. And what is illuminating this space? Is it torches, or is there some other light source? Throughout the interior of the courtyard are torches illuminating it. This gives me big Skyrim dungeon vibes. Oh yeah, same. Nice. They remade Skyrim 20 times, so we'll just redo this (laughs) campaign 20 times too. VR. (laughs) D&D Icewind Dale VR. If this was Skyrim, we'd just run in and kill everyone. Well, no, you like throw a grenade or something, and then you just snipe everyone that comes out (laughs) with your bow and arrow. Grenade? (laughs) What the fuck Skyrim are you playing? (laughs) You like throw something to make a noise. Yeah, if you're sneaking. Yeah. And then you just shoot everybody. Grenade works. Skyrim is the same game where you can ride Thomas the Tank. So, yeah, <laughs> grenade's fine. Oh my god. That's right. Does anybody have a grenade? Before you even say that, Jib, because I don't think that's going to be canon, the three of you please make me a deck save. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love that genuine shot. Oh, well, that's not good. Uh-oh. Hey, deck save. I'm good at that. That's a 19. Uh, even with my plus six, that's a nine. I'm all right at that. 13. Okay. Jib and Everett, you pass. Weak. I'm sorry to tell you you don't. So, as the three of you settle into this place, unfortunately, given the, the dilapidated state of these walls, with your weight on it, it begins to give way, crumbles, and you all fall into the courtyard. Oh, no. Scala, you take seven bludgeoning damage. Ow. And the rest of you take three. Mm. When you fall, obviously it makes some noise. As you're coming to, you notice a young boy runs up to you. Come with me, quickly. And he runs off towards... That kennel area that you notice. We better go. Given the noise that you made, you do notice that the front iron gate is starting to open. And it looks like there's nowhere else to go, right? I mean, you can dally and try the giant iron gate. But I mean, as far as places to hide, this kid's got the only one. Yeah, this courtyard is empty flat snow. They're not bushes in it or anything. I mean, it's 
It's just a snowy courtyard. Okay. What does this boy look like? He is a human boy, and he's dressed in plain clothes, and he has very tattered, dirty hair, long hair, greasy. How delightfully Dickensian. Yeah, literally think Oliver Twist, right? Yes, Oliver Twist. But you don't really get a good look, because you just fell. There's debris around you, and the boy came to you and sprinted off. All right, I follow. Sure, let's do it. Let's go for it. No way, this is a trap. Yeah, I'm rolling insight. Sorry, Jeppy. That's a nat 20. Cool. I love how you always roll high. Hmm. Very sus, Andy. (laughs) I mean, Andy's got loaded dice. Also, this is the blue dice. No, it's fine. I'll tell you on a nat 20, it is a disheveled boy that looks distressed and wants to get into that kennel area as quickly as humanly possible. What little you saw of the boy's face and what little you heard from his voice, you got the sense of fear. And you're saying kennel? Correct. I'm saying kennel. Dogs? Well, why don't you walk on in? Find out. I'll follow. Yes is the answer. But rather you find that out when you get there and you see dogs. Well, how do I know it's a kennel if I don't see dogs? You don't, but you asked, so I told you. Well, I said I was following a while ago, so we all, we're all going, right? Okay. Yes. All right, cool. All right, awesome. The boy shuts the door behind him. It's best you get down. Get down right now. I do. I don't really need to get down. I'm pretty close to the ground, if you hadn't noticed. I think you're taller than I am. Who are you? I'm Jib. Periwinkle Wuggins. Y'all can call me Wink. Who are you before I tell you who I am? Uh, My name's Alisar. I'm the houndskeeper. I live here, but I don't want to. What are you doing here? I am Everett, and we are here to investigate the murders. The murders? So it's real. That's what they've been doing at night. They've been killing your people? More or less. You ain't been feeding those dogs anything strange recently, have you? Just what they give me, and I don't know what like that is. <laughs> I'm not one to operate on scant hearsay evidence, but what have you heard and seen around here in recent weeks? Hold on, hold on, be quiet. Shh, 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 be quiet, be quiet. I'm going to have you all just give me a stealth roll as the guards walk by. Seven. Nine. I only got a 12. Okay. (laughs) Quick, to the far wall, to the far wall, to the far wall. The guard is going to open the door. I'm going to ready in action. What happened? The wall caved in again. We really need to fix it. We should just find somewhere else. This place is falling apart. That's not for you to decide. Everything fine in here? I'll give you all one more stealth check as the guard mildly peers into the kennel. That's worse. That's a 7. It's a 21. I kind of prop up my shield. (laughs) It blends right in. That's a 14. Cool. So that's an average of 14. You're good. Yeah, the guard peers in, looks around, notices the dogs, scans a little bit, and then walks off to join his friend looking at the debris. Everett lowers the arrow that he had drawn on this guard. You know, they took me. I used to live in Lonelywood. The cult there took me and shipped me over here. They've been doing that a lot lately. Their numbers are dwindling. They've been substituting with children. I'm guessing you don't like it here. I mean, I like my friends. He says looking to the dogs. But no, I want to go home. Are you being kept here? Yeah, there used to be another kid. She tried to leave. She didn't make it. I think we should leave this place. Take Alisar with us. Maybe he can tell us more about the fort and the cult. I reckon that's the right thing to do. I agree this to be wise. I peer towards the door. And how would you, young Alisar, suggest we get out of here? Well, you can go through the front, but whoever's left inside will come out for you. And how many are inside? There's Cardoth. He's their leader. There's that soothsayer, Hethel. They got that one hostage. And then the two at the front. But inside, I don't know, a couple dozen? They spend most of their time sleeping. This hostage. Were they captured recently? Feels like it was. There's no real way for me to tell time in days anymore. Every day's the same. But I think it was recent. Within the last cycle of the moon, you would say? Yeah, thank you. That's a way for me to understand. Well, now, don't you worry. I'm gonna get you out of here. If we make a break for the gates, do you think perhaps there's a way the dogs can help us? Dogs know two things. Loyalty and fear. They're loyal to me, but they're afraid of them. I'd like to think loyalty beats fear, but I don't know. Unless any of you have any better ideas. Seems like the only shot we have. You can get inside. (sighs) The way this cult works, they scatter when their leader is gone. Can help you get inside. Karoth usually is in his office. It's up to you. We can run or we can stop this thing at the source. You seem quite intent on having us dispose of your captors for only having just met us. Do you think I'll ever get a chance like this again? You haven't been stuck here. I know what it means to be stuck in a place you do not want to be. Are you telling me you would risk your life for this chance, child? 
The way I see it, I'm risking my life escaping, or I'm risking my life getting revenge for the friend they killed. And if we win, I escape anyway. Everyone's looking for revenge. Very vengeful place, Icewind Dale. Maybe it's the cold. What does that, people? Do you ever lose anybody, Jib? Well, sure. Elves live long lives. I've seen plenty of people come and go. Jib's gonna think to himself, this is exactly the kind of meaning he was looking for in his life. Now listen to me, young human. Revenge is funny. Now, if somebody done hurt you, it's not wrong to want to stand up for yourself and hurt them back. But I'll tell you this, you gotta be smart about it. You gotta pick your battles. The way I see it, with you here, this ain't a battle I want to pick. What I want to do is get you someplace safe, and then we can worry about getting you your revenge. Okay, to the front gate it is. Wink, if we are to leave this place now, we may have no better opportunity to surprise this enemy. However, I do understand the irony. I suggested we merely observe, and here we are. Are you willing to risk losing the opportunity, as it were? To avoid putting this child in danger? 100 per fucking cent. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your softness does not get the better investigation together, Wink. But if this is your wish, then I gesture towards the door. I'm not soft, Everett, but I know what's worth fighting for and what isn't. Everett sort of stares coldly at that comment and will peer out the door. As the three of you make your way to the door, Alisar will unleash the dog. Oh shit, okay. And you all can start to make your way towards the gate. Is there anything you want to do before that starts? There are three places you can go right now, which is storm the front to escape, check the large iron door that goes to the big building, or check the other door, which is on the other side. There's another door that is not the kennel, basically. All right. Al, far as you know, that gate's the only way out? It's the only way out. And that's the way we take. That door right there is the gatehouse. That'll open that gate, get you further in. If we make a run for the gate, we can engage the guards. And Alice, are you make a run for it. Don't get caught up in this. Get somewhere safe. As quickly as you can. Elsar gives you kind of a, a nod that suggests he's just trying to be strong. Attaboy. All right. And the four of you run towards the gate. The dogs follow behind a bit. You come to the gate. Make a perception check. It's going to be a super low DC. But... 15. 21. Uh, I got a 10. Cool. To your left, you notice a lever, which will presumably open the gate. As you're getting closer, you will notice that the guards will turn around, stare at you, and then both close their eyes and begin to murmur. I'm assuming you'd like to... Pull the lever? If combat doesn't start before we get there, yes. Yeah. We don't need to do initiative to pull a fucking lever. We'll just do this in real time. Okay. You pull the lever. The gate slowly begins to open as they continue this murmur. As they're doing this, could I roll Arcana or something? Do I have any inkling of what's up? You can roll... Religion? Can I roll Insight? I was going to say, you could roll Arcana or even Insight if you wanted to. Okay. 17 Arcana. I got an 11. I would say on both your rolls, but definitely on yours, Wink. You know this to be some sort of spell, some sort of telepathic communication in nature, but you don't understand the words they're saying, and you don't know what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. It appears as though they are having a conversation, as opposed to, like, a ritual of some sort. Okay. Can I make out? Who do you want to make out with? Any language? Wow. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I literally have no response for that. It is not a language you'd recognize. You may pick out syllables. This appears to be some sort of bastardization of multiple languages. Okay. It would seem reasonable enough for you to figure that this is probably just because the cult is a bunch of random people bound together by a set of moral code and goals that they have that they've kind of just melded their own random language just stitched together from the people that have joined over decades. Hmm. That's neat. Yeah. The gate fully opens, and let's roll initiative with these two guards. So 14 for Wink. Dirty 20. Nine. Okay. All right. They snap out of it, open their eyes. The one grabs their quarterstaff, and the other one reveals a large sword from beneath their robes. And Everett, it's you. It would appear our cover has been blown. I'm going to hang back and draw my large longbow from beneath the wrappings on my back. Come, Shiva. Let us go to work. And... Very cool. Aiming for the one with the staff, I roll a dirty 20. (laughs) Yeah, that ought to hit. Oh, as I say those words, I'm going to bonus action Hunter's Mark, and then I release the arrow. I need my incredibly sharp D4 where it is. There it is. (laughs) 
And that is 14 piercing damage. All right, cool. And that's my turn. Awesome. As soon as you deal that damage, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. I would be pretty far away when I make that shot. Perception, that's a 15. Cool. Yeah, on a 15, you notice that as soon as you hit this guard with your arrow, not only does this guard reel back in pain, but the other one does as well. Mm, Okay. Neat. They appear to be linked. That guard with the staff is going to go first. Pissed at you, but seeing the distance is instead going to go for... Let's do Jib. Jib's bigger. Jib's bigger. That's great. There's a 19 (laughs) on the dice. Uh Uh-huh. This cultist reeled back in pain, steeled themselves. You notice their eyes gloss over, this time in a cool, pallid white, and they ready this ice lance, which sits in a ball in their hand. It's almost like a Hadouken. I'm just going to call it what it is. They Hadouken this shit. It's like fucking <laughs> Diablo 2. Yeah, it's like a Diablo 2 spell. It just kind of hits you in, in your shoulder. And and that is seven cold damage. I don't know how much movement you plan to do next turn, but your speed is reduced by ten. That's chilly. <laughs> 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 yep, it is. Next is Wink. Oh, all right. These two guards, fairly close together? They are currently about 10 feet apart. Okay, and relative to us, how far away are they? I am guessing that all of you are not quite in melee range yet, but I assumed maybe with the exception of Everett, you all were you know, not, not very far because you got to the gate. Within 60 feet. All I need to know. 1,000% yes. <laughs> okay, good. So... I can hit both of them, 20-foot cube, as I cast Fairy Fire upon them. I strum my banjo, and little sparks fly from my fingers where it connects with the instrument, and they scatter off into the air and dust these two cultists, and they can make me dex saves. Okay, cool. One got an 18, but the other one only got a 10. The one that used Ice Lance is the one with the 10. Okay, so that one is illumined by Fairy Fire. And then as a bonus action, I will use some Bardic Inspiration on Jib. So as I play this chord, I will sing, Hey Jib, get to jabbing, see that cultist get to stabbing. Oh my (laughs) god. So good. Excellent. Right Oh, Cool. All right. That is Wink. It is now Jib. Amazing. Get to stabbing. Right. Get to stabbing. Or whatever you want. That's a D6? Yeah, it's a D6. Inspiration die. D6. All right. And you also have advantage on this school, so it'll be hard to miss. I'm not going to use that D6 just yet, unless I feel I need it. Wait, which one is fairy fired? The one that ice names. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That's a 21 to hit. Yeah. I thought so. That's eight piercing damage as I run up and poke him with my saber. Pokey poke, love it. At this point, all of you have now noticed that when one is hurt, the other one also reels back in pain. That is Jib. We are now on the other one, the one that has the sword. And as this one begins to take its turn, it actually will kneel to the ground, as will the other one. Jeez, what's this? And behind you, you notice that the large iron door begins to open. And out steps a large drow elf, alone. Slowly, while walking towards you, he will say, What exactly? are you doing here interfering with our work and that is where we'll end mm-hmm. wow all right spooky pods of the multiverse is produced by jimmy afadigato that's me with music by andy berger and art by alexa riley Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.